On the 10th of December 1930, Chandrasekhar Venkatraman was awarded Asia's first Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on the scattering of light and for the remarkable discovery of the effect named after him. Raman and his team had put in years of hard work to achieve this goal. But on the day, Raman felt mixed emotions as he wrote later. When I sat in that crowded hall and I saw the sea of Western faces surrounding me, and I, the only Indian in my turban and closed coat, it dawned on me that I was really representing my people and my country. Then I turned around and saw the British Union Jack under which I had been sitting. And it was then that I realized that poor country India did not even have a flag of her own. And it was this that triggered off my complete breakdown. C.V. Raman was a man of extraordinary ability. As a student, he had graduated with a gold medal in physics. He was forced to make a career in civil services as that was a more lucrative option. But he did not give up. While he performed his governmental duties as an assistant accountant general posted in Kolkata during the day, Raman became an experimental physicist during the night. He joined the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science, where he carried out research in the vibrations of stringed instruments and acoustics of drums and submitted his observations for publication in reputed journals. He also studied the whispering effects under the domes of Victoria Memorial in Calcutta, the Gol Gumbas in Bijapur, the Granary in Patna, and St. Paul's Cathedral in London. It was at the IACS that Raman and his students made observations that led to the discovery of the Raman effect. After winning the Nobel Prize, Raman was offered the directorship of the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore in 1933. However, he was disappointed when his vision and freedom to pursue science here was constantly hindered by bureaucratic interference. Thus, after his retirement in 1948, he founded the Raman Research Institute and steadfastly refused any funds and grants from the government. I strongly believe that fundamental science cannot be driven by instructional, industrial and government or military pressures. Raman was pushed to embark on alternative methods of funding and he even invested in two chemical factories in the hope that he could use the profits to spend on his institute. He also toured India and abroad extensively and often sought funds for RRI. The Nobel laureate had a clear vision that India needed more homegrown talent and that a scientific temperament can be built by a true spirit of inquiry and investigation. Professor Raman worked in RRI till the day he died in 1970 and was also cremated on this beautiful campus. He was not only a genius in physics, but also a skillful orator, a respected teacher and a prolific writer. Interestingly, Vikram Sarabhai, remembered as the father of India's space program, was one of Raman's PhD students. In honour of the exemplary scientist, 28 February, the day he announced the discovery of the Raman effect, is celebrated as the National Science Day in India. <laughs>